hesitate and ask question as soon as you get one. So because like you know when you wait till the end, the like you can forget the question or I could forget what I told when like the question appears. So like if you have something, raise the hand or even without raising the hand, unmute yourself and like shoot. <clears throat> so let's start. Let's speak about Internet of Things. Uh, basically, it's for really a speculative uh, term, speculative abbreviation, or even the uh, uh, sphere. Uh, if you remember, like five years ago or something, it, it was very hype, uh, as much as OpenAI hype today. And like today, we will speak. From the like from the first uh, early stages for you to like look into uh, the like this colossal uh, big term of big world of IoT where to begin and if you already work with something uh, for example create your own metal station it's like a really popular thing for the newbies. And we will also mention about the Python in this Internet of Things world and speak a little bit um, about AI thing. Uh, we will mention the open AI thing and the more like professional one, LLM and ML for Internet of Things. So, <clears throat> yeah, uh, Python. When like Python tried to uh, compare the world of uh, Internet of Things, everybody was like, "Okay, come on, Python is like dynamic language. It's very like hard to work with. It's almost impossible that uh, it would be easier or uh, cooler work with the Python uh, on like on small devices or microcontroller." And C plus plus, or C story and C will never lose the uh, like priority, like uh, primer role in the Internet of Things. But as we see right now, it not as it used to be like some time ago, and now Python, like Java, and like some part of C, like basically taking leading position in the in this Internet of Things world. Uh, what is Internet of Things? Basically, it's just a way of communication between devices. <clears throat> so the the most popular case for uh, like Ukrainian people should know the Ajax system. It's like security system that um, connect all different kind of devices at your home. Uh, including security one, the like sensor of uh, water leaking, gas leaking, and so on and so on. And it's all connected to one system. And this system gather all information and somehow notify you about something that happens. Uh, if we speak about the same um, metal station, you have different sensors like humidity, temperature, um, I don't know, maybe like uh, ultraviolet uh, rates different kind of sensors and then you gather them together and show on some like screen like like thermostat or something and allow you to like uh, change the temperature in the in your house according to some uh, external environment uh, how to say it changes and or like home assistant stuff we will speak about home assistant like a bit later, but uh, you want to have like s like smart smart lamp, small smart switch, smart plug, and you want to control them from like one place from your uh, cell phone. And imagine you go like forget to turn off your iron, and you like open your phone, check the uh, plug that your iron used to like is usually plugged into and just switch it off. 
And this is Internet of Things. Basically, Internet of Things is a bunch of different devices, different embedded devices or uh, standalone devices that communicates uh, between like each other through the server or third party data or like any kind of type of communication. And you're able to control each device separately. So basically, basically this is uh, internet of things. Any question regarding this? <clears throat> okay. So it's really fun. It's really fun, fun to work with, to set up this environment, to think about different solutions of gathering data. Uh, if you ever uh, look into CAN bus from the car, this the communication bus for uh, different uh, devices from different sensors, a different part of your uh, vehicle, uh, you know that it's not like very easy task to um, eventually uh, like consistently and eventually communicate between different devices in like in this grid of devices. And for example, the three devices depends on one and then next device depends on everything else. And the uh, like separate device just gather information and change the fifth device and so on and so on. And this is this network is like really hard to uh, build from the scratch. Uh, but hopefully there are many uh, so like production ready solutions already on the market. So what kind of uh, issue you might face when you start working with the IoT? <laughs> if we speak about some like basic stuff, like uh, home assistant stuff, the meteor station or something that already implemented, you're going to face anything, any problem, but it's not fun. If you want to create something like new, you need to know meta. And I will explain why a bit later. Then you also need to know physics. And in this case, uh, this is more critical because uh, you need to know a lot of laws. You need to know a lot of formulas to be able to calculate uh, uh, configuration of different parts of like your device that you're going to build. So they will like, communicate properly and nothing breaks. And uh, you need to know how to iron, uh, how to solder all that stuff together. In like in modern world, most of the things it just it plugs. You buy everything plugs between each other, but again, it's like really simple solution. If you want to work with something like big and new, you need to iron a bit at least to uh, uh, solder some uh, some connectors, at least, or solder some uh, pins. But in single time action, you need to do it a couple times, and then everything else is just a like connector base. Or or uh, you are that kind of person that like to like everything um, sticking around, messing around. So then you can like you need to solder a lot. So this is it. If you have all these, uh, like if you know math, if you know physics, like electronics, and if you know how to uh, like hold solder, uh, that's fine. That's for you, you can start trying. So yeah, as for math, we will speak about this. So physics, first, Thing you need to know before going to uh, these like programming for microcontrollers is type of signal you are going to work with. There are two and only two signals. It's analog wave and digital ping or digital signal. And what the difference? Analog is something that. Uh, mm, I have to explain it in simple word. <clears throat> Imagine that you have a like stream of audio, yeah, and when music plays, you change volume 
uh, like consistently. Yeah, so you uh, put it down, put it up, put it down, put it up, and you will hear the result. You will, you will hear that the music will be louder and then will be like quiet and then louder again and so on. So this is the way if you translate signal uh, through the uh, vo voltage uh, changes. Yeah, so you put like the max number of volts and then change it to, to low and then change up again and then low. So it means you can control uh, something like the brightness level, uh, you can control the, uh, you can read some uh, physical properties of uh, like skin sensor or light sensor or like anything like this. It's always analog. Even the uh, uh, headphone, like headsets and like any head, like, how to say it, like headphones, okay. Uh, it uses analog uh, way of transmitting the audio. Even if the signal from the one, uh, like I use Bluetooth, so Bluetooth sends the digital signal, but inside the headphones, uh, like signal converted from digital to analog because like the micro uh, like the uh, the principle of work depends on magnet and some uh, wire uh, like I forgot how to say it in English like when you uh, put something on like with uh, different numbers of can someone help me with English proper word for this? But what what, what do you mean? One, one more time? What, uh, what? Imagine you have a wire and okay. uh, you need to create magnet field with this wire. So you put this wire a couple Electro, times or elect, something. Electromagnetic field. It's electromagnetic. No, field. no, 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 no. Like the, the, the okay. process of putting the cable over something to create field, magnetic field. Uh, yeah, it's called modulation. No, the physical process. You're wrapping something over. <laughs> um. Okay, I like you have a cable and you have magnet, and you uh, like in headphones you have magnet and cable, and you have mag magnet and you have some kind of core, and you wrap the cable over the core a couple of times, and. Uh, with magnet, with a physical magnet, and with electromagnetic field, uh, it moves the membrane inside the headphones and create the wave, sound wave, according to the like signal it uh, it came. Right. So uh, I, the, the 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 term of this wrapped uh, cable, I forgot the term in English, but anyway, I think everybody got this one. Are you talking so, about <clears throat> isolation? Uh, no. Okay. You okay. forced me to Google it. I forgot the word coil. Shame on me. Yeah, so you're creating the coil over some core to create electromagnetic field to, uh, like, depends on the, uh, the values. It could be, like, physical conversion or it could be, like, already analog signal converted to some other kind of, uh, kind of signal. So, Analog is a wave, and if you're old enough, you should remember that uh, the TV, or if you live in the United States, uh, they use the uh, the coaxial cable that we used to uh, we used to use for the uh, cable TV. They use currently for internet. That's a shame, but anyway, uh, it's analog signal, and if you remember. Sometimes you see some noise on the TV because of this analog signal. And the reason of this, the analog wave is really uh, is really hard to protect from external uh, magnetic field influence. So the wave itself could be distorted from like external magnet. Uh, also, if you uh, create a coil from the cable uh, with the analog signal, it will be distorted by its, by its own uh, magnetic field. So it's very hard to do this. And 
there are like many ways to isolate the uh, isolate the cable from external field, creating some kind of like uh, wrapping around uh, with another metal that will ecran ecranate the uh, like. Uh, I think in English it would be different word like safe from the uh, external environment influence. And this is the problem. So to be able to fix this problem, well, uh, like digital signal uh, specification has been created. So basically, in, in order to send some information, you don't use the wave, you use the only one pitch. Is there a, um, like, Is it powered up or not? Yes, yeah, so we have one cable. Uh, we can power it, and it means one. It means the signal goes through. Even if you power it with a not like, for example, five volts, but three volts, it still will be one. And if you do not power it with anything, it means zero. And then it's end up that we can have the couple cables. Yeah, so for example, HDMI it has like eight or something, and the mm, the internet cable has eight as well, like four for one hundred uh, megabit, and eight cables for fifth hundred to one gigabit internet connection, and you could pass the the signal through one, uh, like through different. Mm, uh, cables, yeah, uh, not cables, but uh, wires. So it means that having four wires, how many numbers you could decode, or the max number you could decode if you have uh, digital signal and four wires? Two power four. Any suggestions? Guys, probably two power four. one. I'm sorry. Four. No. As many four. as how we have wires. No, no. Eight. Oh, eight, eight because and one this is zero. And this is why you need to know math, because this is like basic uh, base changing for the number. 32. If you have binary, yes, yeah, thirty-two, correct. If you have binary number, if you have four wires. You could send like zero one zero one. It means this is a binary number that could be translated to a deck. Yeah, so to like a ten base number. And in order to do this conversion, you need to take two of power of four. How many digits you have? This is the power, and two power of four is like uh, thirty-two. Uh, or is it no? Correct. Uh, so, <clears throat> and if you have more cables, like eight, you could like calculate more number. Two power eight. Two hundred fifty-six. So. We have this number. It means that we could build this uh, simulation of wave. Yeah. So if we need to put the like number like three, we send one number. Like uh, we create binary number and send through the cable. If if you need to make bigger value, we have same one. If you need to make negative value, we send some special code before sending the signal. And then send the, the same number, but the system that reads this number will read it like uh, like as a negative number, and so on and so on. So there are many uh, things. I will show you the examples of drivers, and yeah. So this is the first thing you need to know. What do you uh, like? What do you expect to do? How many data you want to trans um, transit? The analog signal is faster. Than digital, but again, if you have any source of magnetic or electric field, uh, the signal will be distorted. You will have some bad values from time to time. 
if you don't have one, if your cable is isolated, like really good is isolated, you're safe to use analog. Uh, if you need to send like big values or values that exceed the max value for the analog signal, because the max value of analog signal is max voltage your, uh, like you can read. Also, I'll give some examples of this. You can also use digital signal. If you need to call the uh, uh, bigger number, yeah, uh, what can you do? You could send first number and then uh, send some special sign and send the next number. Yeah. So speaking about special signs, uh, um, when you when you work with embedded devices, there are always several modes. Yeah. So for example, you have a screen. You need to show something on the screen. You need to show, for example, a letter. So you send the uh, ASCII number of this letter to the screen, and this letter will appear. But what should you send in order to clear the screen or uh, change the cursor or change the position of the cursor and something? So in these cases, when you have digital signal, you could reserve some numbers as the control numbers. Yeah, so for example, if you send um, like not like this uh, data on these pins, yeah, so basically you send some number, it means that next number you send will be thread not as an like value to show, but value to operate, to change the mode, to change the settings, to like reset. Uh, change the cursor, change some different specification. And then you send another code to like change the mode and so on. And those codes, like special reserved codes, basically is your driver. <laughs> All of you from time to time uh, work with the drivers on like Windows, Mac, Linux, doesn't matter, or Unix you work with drivers for new devices and what the driver is it's just a list of those control signals mostly like there are more other things but mostly it's list of these control signals how to communicate with device for example the you send signal one initialize you send signal two get me your uh, give me your version give me information about you uh, manufacturer date and everything else. Then I send the signal that means uh, that like uh, create like that um, perform diagnostic or like many other things or reset or power off or reboot like all those special codes you send to the device uh, is your driver basically. The, the your operational system knows how what to send to this device to properly communicate with this device. The same with any other uh, sensor you are going to work with. If you are going to work with, you need to read specification. Basically, you it's it's enough to download the proper uh, module on on uh, on Python or any other language you are going to work with uh, in order to implement some feature. Um, but it's like it's enough to just download, download the driver, and uh, when you call some method like reset, if you look into uh, the driver, you will see that it's just sending through some pins, uh, pin in or pin like high or low. Yeah, so is it like send the information or send nothing? And then these control signals will be uh, like. Uh, the, the sensor or other device will understand those signals and will give you some information back or just, I know, accept the command and execute the command. So this is it. And this is an example of uh, the coaxial cable <clears throat> that wi widely used for analog signal. Uh, or if you're audio field, you should, uh, you should have this really, really big cable uh, analog cable for audio signal. Uh, even the regular uh, tulip 
cables, AUX, uh, AUX cables are like uh, analog cables, <coughs> but they not acronate. They have bad uh, specification, but uh, characteristic of the metal inside. So the, this is it. And what do you see? The D is the cable that just to transfer the signal. C is isolation, like in, internal isolation. B is metal isolation, like like in Ukraine we call a cram, like uh, protect uh, from the uh, external environment, uh, like electric fields, like and magnetic fields. And the A is a like uh, external uh, isolation, just to protect this like protection. So even with, but even with this, if you have like strong magnet or like like a lot of those cables put together, they will all like messed up with uh, each other. If you used to work with the uh, old phones, uh, your cable goes with uh, like very close to another cable, and in some cases, when you call to someone uh, from the uh, stationary phone. Uh, you could hear someone speaking on the background, and it's not—it's not like uh, hot wire, uh, like or uh, I forgot how to tell it. Like it's not any bug. Uh, it's just a like electromagnetic field, like electric field and magnetic field that one cable produces interrupt with another cable, and you just hear the voice that just transmitted into uh, through the another cable that your cable is next to. So the old phone cables uh, didn't have any like any protection at all. It's just a very small isolation and that's all. So this is the effect. So you will still still hear some like anything you like want to, but you also will hear some like bad signal that like uh, interference. So and you need to count on this as well. Like, again, if you send any messages, but you don't respond, uh, I won't be able to read any message. So just like unmute or start speaking. So why do you need no physics? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're going to work with all small like uh, devices, like uh, transistors, like uh, tristors, res like resistors, and different kind of devices. and you need to know the specification of this particular item to understand how to like use that. And sometimes you need to calculate, calculate using like physics law, uh, is it okay or not use this particular resistor? Or is it okay for me to use this transistor? Is it okay to use this capacitor? Uh, I forgot how, how capacitor would be in Ukrainian. Maybe Yemnist? No, no, capacitor. Oh, okay. Condensator. Yeah, condensator. Condensator. So uh, when you select capacitor, you also need to calculate the uh, capacity of the capacitor and uh, how many like energy will like be able to go into uh, because uh, in some cases if you uh, did it wrong or some protection broken your capacitor could be like blown it's like the most regular uh, reason of uh, broken device is like broken capacitor like blown capacitor. Uh, <clears throat> so you need to understand all those things if you want to work like deeper with the uh, uh, with embedding devices. And again, you need to know math to do logical operation, to do uh, number conversion. And I will give you an example. I used to have a project, IoT project for the like, uh, skin sensors so uh, uh like we created the device to understand the condition of the skin and the human body during some uh like 
let's call it exercises. And like I need to convert really big numbers. And imagine I need to perform formula something like uh, 10 multiply 20 divided by 10 minus some constant value. And this is the long operation. And in most cases, you don't even think about this because the um, CPU that you have, um, it, it like is very good with the, this simple uh, math operation. But the microcontroller is has a limited cache, or even doesn't have one, and the, it has limited number of resistors that basically uh, respond. Uh, like responsible for doing math to the logical operation. And yes, the CPU do any calculation to like uh, physical resistors inside the uh, uh, like transistors or inside the uh, inside. And the location of this transistor will allow you to do like uh, multiplying <clears throat> and uh, adding. Everything else is just a variation. Like uh, extracting is just uh, like adding the negative numbers. Dividing is just uh, like multiplying, but in a different way. So, <clears throat> and in order to uh, w the device to work fast, make device to work fast, you need to uh, simplify this equation. Like really simplify, and you know how to. You need to know how to do it. You need to know some basic algorithms how to simplify the, the equation. The next item, when you have a lot of uh, logical operation, like you have couple ifs, or you have couple conditions inside one if, and it's also not okay because all those converted to like is. Like, is it zero or is it one? Is it one zero or is it one? Uh, and so on and so on and so on. And in uh, like logical alg algebra, there is a separate uh, uh, separate wave, lane, division that concentrate on this logical operation. It's like called discrete uh, math. And uh, Oh, sparse pressure. Discrete math has uh, logic, algebra logic as a uh, part. But anyway, like it contains a lot of ways how to simplify your uh, chain of logical operations. Yeah. So uh, if you ever heard about uh, conjunction, disjunction, uh, equivalent, um, uh, implication and all other stuff. So if you have like one if with the five condition, uh, you need to know how to simplify to at least two conditions or three conditions, like to, to make it like, uh, to create less conditions. The code you are going to produce won't be elegant at all, but the, your main purpose here is to create like fast working code, not elegant. Forget about the elegant. <clears throat> Uh, and like you need to know those rules. You need to at, at least know how to Google it, how to Google the law, Google the, the law, how to simplify this or ways how to simplify it. Uh, yeah, any question on this? No. So let's go with the like examples. On the market for the Python, uh, for the like uh, as a Python version for embedded devices, we have two Python versions. Both of them uh, are fork from the regular Python. Uh, the first one, uh, and it's really the first one called MicroPython. It was created specially for embedded devices. Uh, the Python version three uh, was taken as a base. Uh, it was like a lot of items uh, thrown away. It was uh, put into like uh, read-only memory, like as operational system. Uh, like you could integrate the Python REPL inside the embedded device, like 
as the like say like to operate as an operational system uh, as a so uh, as the core of microcontroller and um, what, spoiler alert you could connect after installing the micro Python on the uh, like your board you could connect to SS, SSI, SSH to your board and you will see the Python interpreter yeah so do you, like everybody knows what the REPL is <clears throat> Nope. No one? Python community? Okay. So REPL is a technique of any language of programming when you uh, work line by line by line. Yeah, so if you remember when you open Python interpreter from the console, you see this like line when you put a uh, command into. And when you like uh, hit enter, this command will be executed immediately. Yeah, unlikely to execute in the Python file, you will execute all lines and in single context. But in REPL, you read one line and you have immediate result of execution of this line. And you have the uh, and you have the single uh, context means that when you run some command at the beginning, like initialize some variable no matter how many lines you produced, you will be able to access this variable at any time. Yeah, unless you close the session and you reopen the, the REPL. So it will be stored in memory. So REPL means that you could, uh, <clears throat> you could go inside uh, into your uh, board. You will have Python to run the command, like read the logs or uh, connect pipe to the log output or do whatever you want. So it's like really cool for the micro Python because you are not going to do uh, to have this in other boards with other languages because uh, you will see only output. You will see only like the, the console that the, the process produces and you won't be able to type any new comment. But with Python, uh, on with MicroPython or like one other Python, it's like cool feature. Uh, it was cleaned up a lot. A lot of batteries has been thrown away. Uh, it like the PIP has been rewritten for the MicroPython. So and like uh, you will have access to like to special PyPy for the MicroPython and you, 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 you will be able to install a lot of uh, packages and you will be able to create your own. Async.io has been migrated as well, which is like super cool. And uh, if you ever work with a uh, microcontroller, like even Arduino, if you ever try with the Arduino, it, everything on Arduino executed synchronously and like if you want to play audio and move something, like in real world, the audio played and only then, like even if the player, uh, you want to play one second, only after this sensor stop playing, you will be able to go to the next line of code. And, and async will allow you to send information to another sensor or, and forget about it and start executing another one. So we have all that kind of stuff. <laughs> It also has like a uh, special battery for controlling the board. Basically, this is batteries. Th this is a model to uh, read the pin, read the input uh, signal or send the signal. Yeah. So you able to send zero or one for digital pins, and uh, like it depends on board. What what kind of signal you want to send? It depends on the board, and you could send zero or one, or you could send the uh, value if it's analog uh, pin. And value means you will be able to send the max value that uh, using the voltage, the max value that board allow. Example. <clears throat> so I have 
like board that supports three and three volts. Basically, I cannot send like send really three and three. I send mostly like three point two and some uh, precise after the uh, floating uh, point. So having this value, and it could be like three point two, three, five, seven, six, five, something, something, something. And then if your board uh, can read the signal, if the uh, chip inside could understand that this is a, like five uh, digits after a floating point, you could convert this number to a like, big number. So for example, I used to work uh, with board that uh, understand four digits after the uh, uh, after the comma means I could convert the max value to 32 and like five something something 511 or something uh, oh uh, 263 I, I don't remember that number but I I was able to convert to this number and means that I could send value using analog signal from zero to 32,000 something, which is like really big value. And I could read this kind of value. So it means I could, uh, if we speak about sensors, I could notice the smallest uh, change in the like temperature condition or uh, humidity or any other stuff that my sensor worked with. Which is great. If you're like you have a like simple board, you won't be able to not like recognize this uh, big number of well, big values. So you will be able to recognize the like, smaller value. The same with the uh, like with digital numbers. So imagine I have four pins. Four pins means I could send only thirty-two. But if I sense send through these three pin uh, four pins three values, like Basically, it's mostly two. I could send, for example, high bits and then low bits. And then using the sending signal twice, I could create a like, bigger number. I could do the same. I could send high bits, mid bits, and low bits. It means I could send uh, 12 values. And this is the bigger number. This is like much bigger number. So, uh, and again, Sending the digital signal means if I send one, and sending one means I send three point like three point two, and I have electromagnetic fields. Yes, yeah, so I I send one zero one zero means three point two zero three point two zero. Then I have some interruption on the way of the cable that change the voltage. So for example, it would be two point five one two point five one. On the main draft, it still will be one zero one zero, because like I could configure that. Okay, I have the difference between higher and lowest value in this grid, like some values, some uh, like precise, some like sub epsilon. Let's call it epsilon. I have the epsilon, and I see okay the difference between the higher and lowest. This one it means this is the one, and this is the zero, and this is why the, the digital signal mostly doesn't care about the external signal. So going back to micro, MicroPython. So MicroPython is great. I used to help, like work with the MicroPython and like CircuitPython. There's another one. <clears throat> and the MicroPython goes with the production ready pipeboard. We're going to speak this, uh, about this as well. And the cool thing that uh, on the MicroPython, you can use so-called unicorn, which is uh, test application. Basically, you could, as you see, this is the REPL. This is like, imagine you SSH to your device. Uh, this is the code you like script, main pi. Uh, you want to execute on the on the board. This is a well, like pi b and machine. So uh, you could like, as you see, you could connect like uh, through the pi board. Pi board is just a like module that allows you to pre-configure the pins. And the machine, the module that allows you to send value through the pins. Yeah, so everything you need to do is just uh, you say, oh, okay, in initialize server for me, 
in this like uh, state and send me on this pin some value. So then I said, turn servo, uh, servo for the like 90 degrees over 1000 milliseconds and create like send signal to this pin, which is like a digital pin. And as you see here, it will light up the uh, LED. Uh, <coughs> like um, also why you need to know physics. Uh, you need to understand what kind of resistor you need to put after the pin, uh, after the LED uh, onto the ground or onto the zero to be able to uh, this LED live longer. This is like really important. And you need to know physics to understand why, you, where is it applicable and where is not the location of the resistor. It could be before or after, doesn't like in some cases it doesn't matter in most cases it like uh, in most cases it doesn't matter in some like small cases it matters so you need to know this case as well uh, yeah so and you can play uh, with this unicorn uh, play different options before like going with a like a physical device there are a lot of presets that you could try also it used to be micro python live uh, where there are a lot of devices uh, included into the like real device, like all of them included once at once, and you could type your command to execute here, and which is like it's possible because it's REPL. You could uh, create a session, execute this command, and this command will like do something, and even when you uh, like if you work with the regular devices. Uh, driven by not Python but something else, what you do, you create the script, deploy, and run, <clears throat> and you wait. In Python, with REPL inside, you could just SSH and type command and see the result immediately, which is like I like uh, MicroPython uh, for. Uh, I think this this uh, this option is down for like some period of time, uh, but like from time to time you can check. Uh, I was able to execute my comments a couple of times just to like for demo purposes, but again, uh, not now. Uh, funny thing that Zen module, like this module with the Python Zen has been shown away because as I said recently, it's almost impossible to follow the Zen in Python. In most cases, you need to have like your code should be ugly. Your code should be like sophisticated, but work faster. So this is like this is something you 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 should know. And yeah, uh, remember about optimization and on MicroPython, any kind of Python, uh, any kind of like microcontroller controller programming world. Remember the the chips that they use is like not such great as your PC and you need to optimize to make it like to to make it faster like a lot optimize a lot and like all of that pipeboard what is pipeboard uh only one uh, cool thing about pipeboard uh it's small it's already by micro python pre-installed uh you can do whatever you want you have a lot of pins like a lot. Uh, I think some board has up to 60 or something like like a lot of pins and which is great if you need to like just have a controller, just have a chip and like control a lot of devices at the same time, which is like really great. It has like small CPU Cortex M4, like a uh, really slow one, but uh, but it has this hardware floating point, which is mean that the, uh, there are two ways of calculating the uh, numbers after the uh, floating point. Uh, it could be hardware or software. Hardware means that you on the hardware level knows, so this is 1.25678. If it's software, you have the two numbers. One is the integer, and second is the number, uh, like, I think it's a base, 
you store the base separately. Base is like the numbers before. It's like the the integer part of the float. You say you save the base number, <clears throat> and then you create floating point, which is like uh, okay for the memory, but not okay for the performance. Uh, it has real clock. It has accelerator inside, which is great. We, like we create cool project with a. Uh, uh, it was kind of like uh, radio, like radio car, like uh, radio control car, but with a dynamic. Um, I need to Google this one. Ibiza. Pendant. Yeah, pendant. No, not the kind of Ibiza. Uh, Suspension, su suspension, card suspension. I don't know. I think Google messing with me. Uh, okay, the the part of uh, the vehicle that allows you to stand still when you like has on the like uh, go through the angle or uh, turn uh, into some way, and it keeps the the car uh, like on the level with the road and uh, eliminate any vibration or uh, uh, holes on the road. So, and we implement something like this using accelerator. We uh, like we know where the car is to tune up the, uh, the, uh, the wheels and this connection between wheels and car, uh, which is like really great. And ADC, DAC, it's like analog digital conversion and digital analog conversion, which is mean that in analog digital conversion, uh, you could send the, uh, you could receive the number, like the, the voltage and add, like get the number. Yeah, remember if you like, it could be like from zero to any number that uh, your board support and vice versa. When you have like, uh, <clears throat> when you have your number and you need to send the special like voltage, uh, it will convert it to that, that number. Uh, this is about PyBoard. Uh, we also have circuit board, uh, circuit Python. This is basically for this. They they took Micro Python and uh, make it more accessible for the regular user. For so, Micro Python is more like a for for professional users that already know how to work with, how to deal with the different sensors, how to deal with the uh, like different devices. And it's very small. Uh, it's all about performance and all about uh, like uh, clear code. But circuit Python is more about I want to learn, learn. I want to start something, to work something. There is a company called Adafruit, and it creates a lot of uh, uh, different boards, sensors, uh, ready project, and a lot of them for education for like how to help kids to start implementing some embedding and implementing some uh, IoT solutions and so on and so on. So uh, the other food just fork MicroPython and create CircuitPython and just like make it simpler, make it less code to write uh, to like have your product, but, but it's not optimized at all. So if you want to use, use CircuitPython as like on the, like, really small devices and you need to perform some like heavy calculation on small devices, circuit Python could not be really option for you <clears throat> because it takes more place. It takes more time to calculate something uh, if you use some external modules and so on and so on. But as a big, uh, like as a beginner, I would recommend you to go to other food site. Uh, oh, no. Uh, I will show you later. Go to other food site, catch some words uh, or ready solutions, uh, and start type like writing on the circuit Python some connection stuff. And again, if you work with Python, circuit Python or micro Python will be like really easy for you to like to understand to work with to like start typing application because the regular hello world is like really easy to implement. And uh, 
the other fruit works with the, this uh, mu. Mu is the ID based on uh, like Arduino. If you, again, if you ever work with the Arduino, Arduino has own ID and uh, IDE and this ID allows you to type something and run on the device already so without like deploying it somehow through the com port and the old stuff you just need to connect your device connect it here uh, maybe download drivers uh, for your board or like it's easy enough like for the micro python like for the other fruit and pipe boards uh, when you connect something, it's recognized as the uh, flash drive. So you could just put files there. And here as well, <clears throat> when you connect OpenMU, connect your board, and you could start typing here. You could start, start typing and execute the code. And as you see, it supports secret, circuit Python, ESP micro Python. Uh, this is special, uh, special, um, uh, MicroPython with library for ESP development. Uh, as you know, uh, on ESP is like some kind of C on the board, but you could uh, change the, uh, the soft and install MicroPython uh, on ESP devices uh, and like do whatever you want. The same for the Lego Spike. Uh, you could write if like if you have kids and they like old enough, uh, draw enough and like STEM and like Lego and ready to use Lego. Uh, so Lego Spike means that uh, programmed uh, devices. You could use MicroPython as well for, 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 for that and control it. Uh, the same, you could like uh, deploy to micro, uh, to PyBoard, to like to Raspberry and like regular Python 3 and web, that's fine. We need it, but anyway. Also, there is a microbit. Microbit is uh, also educational project. Like there, there are a lot of small, like small boards with everything soldered in already. Like a lot of sensors. It could be uh, some screens, uh, tags, uh, joypads, like anything. So this is the ID for you if you ever want to work with a Python uh, for embedded devices or like creating the solution. And as for other fruit, there are small, like other fruit trinket. As you see, it's like really small. It's like extremely small. It's like uh, you could create a batch, a batch for you, like dynamic batch here, like on your uh, shared uh, cord, anything. It was like really, really small. And those, tr uh, like there are trinket, feather, and, something else, some, some kind of work. And uh, you could use them and you could write Python code and you have they have enough uh, stuff. On, for example, this one, it has ESP Wi-Fi module already on the board. And you could like write the code that will have access to Wi-Fi already. So like a lot of stuff. And playground. Playground means that this is the board. You could connect to this pin, send some values, and see the result. That's for uh, mostly for training purposes. And as you see here, there are like playground 40 devices, BC 15, as like this is, yeah, trinkets devices 24. There are a lot of devices <clears throat> that you could uh, work with and like start working with. And this is European company, so it might take a couple, like couple days up to one week, uh, even with the like take into account the war. Uh, it like it takes like week or maybe week and a half from Europe to get here uh, this device. Or you can find some uh, on the uh, retail, like retailer, but uh, I would not recommend. The prices is like almost twice bigger than than you see on the screen. And yeah, so this is all about Internet of Things. So if you work, if you like wondering about the like uh, soft for Internet of Things, there is like plenty. So uh, only one thing I could uh, highlight is zero MQ. It's like real, really small message queue broker for 
uh, embedded devices. It's like uh, also there, there is some like other kind of message queue uh, based on M uh, yeah. We have MQTP, M MQP, and we have like another standard for message brokering for the embedded devices. And that's all. Everything else you're going to work with is the same. Like you need to have a server, you need to have database, you need to uh, have connection, you need to read sockets. Like in our cases, like socket would be the uh, uh, the pin you connected to. So imagine that uh, you create the server and you need to like communicate with different uh, clients at the same time. And and that's basically it. It doesn't really doesn't have any difference between like regular and embedding programming in modern world. Uh, again, only like few items you need to know how to build it up. You need to know how to synchronize this. Uh, it's more like a question of uh, like architecture of many clients to one server or many servers to one client, like scraping or something. And that's all. Uh, the difference between like a standard message broker and uh, like message broker for IoT solution is just the weight, how many information is sent, how many uh, like they they make it uh, lighter. So if you have a really low bandwidth, uh, it's easier to send like data through through in bad connection, bad Wi-Fi or. <clears throat> No connection at all. You need to like uh, uh, fight through the interferences or any kind of stuff, and that's all. In most cases, it's the same uh, the same way of programming as you uh, used to with the like uh, cluster devices because it's basically cluster of many items, and you also could have several several uh, uh, sensors of the same uh, purpose and synchronize them and read the value from all three and understand which one is like better or just show the different items in different parts of the like room or something. And the last part is open AI. So um, I'm sorry, uh, Sash, we a bit out of yeah. time already. Um, yeah, I know. It's like I need five minutes more. Okay. So. okay. I'm also out of time. It's like time management with the presentation is like my Biggest problem, I think. I hope so. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the most obvious uh, like place when you could use AI is building home assistant network. So when you want to have your own like Eho or Alexa or uh, like what, what do we have here? Like, like the, the Cortana or anything like this. So you could create the same word that will like, you could ask something, yeah? And it will recognize your, uh, what do you want? And, and start playing it or start doing it or like start, um, for example, you want to uh, water in your plants by command. And it's not only command, it's like, uh, like make some, uh, like planning or uh, can you please, uh, you could really say like, can you please uh, water plants if humidity would be lower or something, something, but only for today or only for other day or like something like this, or you could command, like us to synchronize different devices and in or order to do this you can use the like existing uh solutions or if you really want to implement something like your own because you have like really special sensors or special devices so what you can do is to use open ai <clears throat> open ai has two modules that will be useful for you is Whisper AI and GPT AI, like not chat GPT, just GPT. Uh, 
uh, and they have API. They have API that will allow you to, for example, you record audio, you send audio audio to Whisper, Whisper, Whisper will send you the translate like a uh, transcript of the audio, basically uh, convert everything you say into text. Then you have this text and send to the uh, GBT or like any other model. And like it will generate something. It will generate some comments that you could already execute in your device or do something, um, something else with this. So this is how you integrate uh, OpenAI through the API and only through the API. There is no other way for you to do anything like this. Uh, even if we take ESP, there is a special module called uh, is, is pressive, so something like this. And it has the module called OpenAI. And it's basically uh, HTTP, uh, HTTP client just for OpenAI. Everything you need to do is just to register on the OpenAI, create the API token, and put the token here inside the device and just use it. If you never work with the OpenAI API, you should have to. Uh, I created a really small plugin for my AD to communicate with OpenAI uh, on my specific question <laughs> and using specific model. And yeah, so this is about Open API, Open AI, sorry. And uh, everything you can do is just to communicate through the inter internet, through the API to translate your voice to the uh, text and then use this text to translate something to the, like, uh, to the comment. Also, what, what you can do is use an API and a stable diffusion and the text, generate images and show images. So for example, you like, uh, create me the image when I'm on, like, I don't know, I'm in the forest doing something. And then uh, Whisper AI recognize this one. Uh, Open AI create the request to like uh, Mid Journey API, which is like basically stable diffusion, uh, because Mid Journey itself doesn't have doesn't have API, but there is the uh, stable diffusion. Uh, it's uh, AI for image image generation, and you can generate the comment uh, to the stable diffusion API and get the image and show this image on another device or whatever you want. But remember, anything you can do, like most of the thing you can do with the great models is just the API access. But if you're brave enough, oh, and this is the example. And this is the example on MicroPython that like you just go to the like request and all modules that uh, like most of the batteries have this U prefix in MicroPython. <clears throat> so everything you do is just to create this key, like uh, prepare URL. It could be completion. It could be uh, for DaVinci, it's completion. For GPT, it's message. I don't remember the another API for for another model. And you send the like you send the prompt you want to uh, work with, and that's all. And you send back the response like choices, different choices. You could keep the communication. You could keep the like different items, uh, live chat, and then use another AI to like voice it. So like everything you can do, but again, it's only API. And for these purposes, you need to have one device, uh, the motherboard with the, everything on it, with a good internet connection and like, uh, with the access to the internet. So for example, I'm currently working on some project with the Orange Pi board, and it has Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 on the board, which is mean I could use one gigabit of internet on my board, which is like great. I didn't test it, I test only half of a gigabyte and it was awesome. So API, only one way to use API. But again, if you're brave enough and you at least work with ML, with the machine learning, even like small one, you have more options to work with this. 
if you need your device to perform some small, like uh, narrow kind of calculations, you can use tiny ML and uh, you can create your device uh, to calculate, like to process sensors. Like imagine you have a lot of sensors and you synchronize with other devices, other ser servers and get sensors as well. And you don't want to send or wait the PC to generate the like data for you. And you need to generate some, like analyze the data and generate the result immediately and show on the display. So you could use TinyML, train the model. Uh, you train the model on PC and this, then use the uh, embeddings inside the uh, there is like much confusion like embeddings in ml it's not an embedded device it's different terms and like you may also when you google it you will be confused because embedded device means like some small and embeddings in uh, like it's not the smallest like some like integrate something that you integrate into something else but embeddings in emails means the model extension that you could re or use in your uh, machine learning uh, task so you could train it and use these trains like train model already trained model in the ai uh, in the microcontroller and it will work perfectly because train model the the, the hardest part they use the uh, they use the train model like not uh it's like really cpu efficient operation uh also there is a tensor tensorflow uh for microcontrollers it calls tensorflow light and i think the biggest and the coolest stuff is llama llama is the llm like large language model this is basically uh generative ai that allows you to create like something like very like a uh, gbt version 3 on your embedded device that you you could do like like a lot of stuff and it would not be as smart as the gbt point like 4 but it would be smart enough to use your like daily task and understand your language keep the uh keep conversation uh with you uh, remember the context do some conclusions and basically do most of the cool, uh, like all LLM uh, models do. Uh, yeah, there are links that I will send separately, uh, like creating a chat bot server on Raspberry Pi, um, a tiny ML for uh, microcontrollers and some projects idea for LLM on, uh, uh, on uh, small, well, like for IoT. Yeah, so LLM project ideas for IoT. Yeah, and that's basically it. Uh, any questions?